Yeah, so good morning everyone. Today uh, we are focusing on the rheology. So at the last time of the previous lecture, so we tried to understand this rheology, uh, oscillatory rheology. So let's try to understand more. It's not easy to see. So in, in this oscillatory rheology, this is a very common method to measure the hydrogen property. So we can measure shear stress and shear strain. The shear stress means that this is the hydrogen, and then you apply the force uh, this way. And then you have some certain area, like diameter. So normally, you made the hydrogen as a disk shape or a round shape, cylinder shape. So the stress can be calculated by F, force, divided by area. And then what is the meaning of the shear strain? It's a little bit different from the other things. In the shear strain, uh, we normally consider this height of the hydrogen. And then, compared to height, how much of uh, this displacement was made. So this is calculated by this. Uh, deformation divided by height. So the 1% strain, shear strain means that let's say it's a 100 millimeter and only one millimeter was deformed, okay, in this way. So, and then when you convert this kind of stress and strain in this uh, hydrogen cylinder shape, we normally make this hydrogen cylinder shape like 25 millimeter. So if we want to measure hydrogen property, better to use this 25 millimeter certain, certain mold using PDMS. You can make some punch, or you can, in any way, you can make this mold. I I know we have this kind of similar mold. Maybe you can ask G1 and Mr. An. So he or she can let you know. So and then the. The definition of the G, so you have to see a lot of G today. The G means strain, the stress is divided by strain. So this G is or, already known, this is some kind of modulus, right? So modulus is a stiffness. But in this, even though we say modulus, but we cannot say stiffness in this oscillatory rheology. We just say that this is not exactly related to the stiffness, but it's not direct elastic modulus, but they are similar uh, parameter related to the elastic modulus. I will show you later how you calculate the elastic modulus using the shear modulus. Okay? So when you want to convert the shear modulus, you have to make the shear stress and then divide the shear stress value, shear strain. Okay? and you can get the shear modulus. And then you already remember the stress, the unit is megapascal, right? Strain, no value, right? Because the lower value, can, higher value, same millimeter or radian or some any other value can be divided. So strain, no value. So also when you, when you think about this modulus, you can think in the same manner for the strain stress curve. Okay, so this can be labeled as megapascal or gigapascal. Okay, so basically, if we want to make some PDMS mold, you punch like more diameter, let's say 30, and you punch again in a diameter, 25, and then you can make this kind of PDMS mold. And then you determine the thickness uh, based on how much you pour the height for the PDMS or you can cut by yourself. So, and then you can make this kind of hydrogen mold. And then, in this, in this rheology, the original behavior is like they rotate it. This is some hydrogen. They, when they approach this hydrogen, they rotate it. So, we can uh, depict like that. This is a normal condition. And then, this height, this rotation, they can, they always the maximum rotation is 90 degree. And then they come back, and then the other side, they shift 90 degree. This is their maximum um, maximum behavior. They cannot go over 90 degree, okay? 
So here, we just depict the 90 degrees. So let's say this original position is changed to 90 degrees. And then from here, you can gather this short stress from this area and the Newton. So Newton divided by area, stress. And then also you can get some strain on time. What is the strain? Formation divided by height, right? So this RA is revealed as shear strain. So shear, shear strain is this, uh, this value is shear strain. Uh, sorry, uh, this is this 0, 90, 180. This angle is revealed as shear strain because in this, in this manner, we rotate them. So shear strain is revealed as degree. Or as you know, degree can be converted as a radian, RAD. So this is some shear strain. And then it, over time, you can see that. So you can get this kind of yeah, shear strain and shear stress curve. So how much of yeah, this y-axis change over degree, this is some shear strain like this over time. And then also on the same time, you can get shear stress. So from this uh, sinusoidal graph, you can get the maximum shear strain. So shear strain over time, they change. This time, this angle a little bit, this angle maximum and then decrease. And then on another position, maximum and decrease. And on the same time, shear stress also you can measure like this. Depending on the angle, when they shift like 48, 45 angle, they shear stress like this. And then a 90 angle, shear stress like this. And then they want to come back. So this is a little bit 180. This is not literally they rotate the 100 degree. They just go back to normal position. And then another, and then the normal position. So like this, they shift and come back, okay? This is some meaning of the oscillatory. So you can say that from the oscillatory manner, you can get a short strain and short stress. And that this is a very ideal, ideal graph, which only you detected by elastic, super elastic material. But so in super elastic material, you can change the strain and then on the same time, you can get the stress. And then the peak is same here. This is mean no delay. No delay means very ideal elastic material, very solid material, like stone. But so, but when you give the press set strain change using the rheology, but the result is a little bit delayed. For example, you change the strain but the result, they a little bit delay like this. How you know delay? This is peak is different, right? So when you apply this strain, maybe in elastic, very ideal elastic material, they should follow at the same time, but somehow they are delayed. So this is main, this is meaning delayed, and then you can know the phase of the shift angle. This is called 90, 60 angle at the moment. So this is the physical elastic material. So uh, this is a very ideal elastic material, we can, which means that you cannot detect this manner. When you measure every material, they show like this. Because N is, they have very small portion of the viscosity. So they, are, they should be delayed. So this is a normal way how you gather this measure. So using this, uh, so this machine, they can determine the how much of phase shift, okay? And then depending on the shift, you can say that 90 degree is ideal fluid, okay? I, I, ideal fluid means that some water, water. And then zero degree, like this, no delay, is ideal solid, which is super elastic material. And then, so depending on this shift angle, when, when your material has less than 40, not 45 angle, you can say this is more solid or gel state. But when, when this angle is over 40, 45, and then we can say it is more fluid status. Okay? So this is like more material. This is like more water. You can say that. So depending on the shift angle, you can 
know there how much of the property are there. So, and then you can gather this kind of graph. What is G star? G star means previously you saw this uh, shear modulus, right? This is the shear modulus. Shear modulus, so using the maximum stress and maximum strain, when the maximum stress was divided by maximum strain, you can gather the uh, the G star value as a modulus. This is called applied modulus. But when you apply the modulus and then you know the how much of, of the phase are shift, and then you can cosine this G prime value is called elastic quotient. So storage modulus. And then this uh, sine value, G double prime, which is called viscose portion. And then we can say also loss of modulus. So just you think about you, from this maximum strain and maximum stress, you can gather this G, G star. This is some original uh, modulus, shear modulus. And then you the shear modulus, and then you have to consider the phase change. And then when you consider to this phase change, you can get this two value, G prime and G double prime. G prime is meaning of elastic property. G double prime mean, meaning the viscosity property. If you can understand this one, just, just you can remember G prime is material point, G double prime is water point. Okay? So you can imagine this angle is more f higher than 45, and then you can imagine that uh, this viscous portion is increased. And the elastic portion is decreased, right? And then we can say that more viscosity. And then this angle is less than 45, like this. Elastic portion is the same, but viscous portion is lower. So they, they tend to be more elastic, more material. OK, so from this uh, real logic system, you, you can gather these uh, five values all together at the same time. So if you measure this, if you use this machine, you can measure this five feet at the same time. Okay, I will show you later. Anyhow, when you change the shear strain, also you can gather the shear stress, and then you know the, how much of shift are there, and then the machine automatically, they uh, gather this information, and then this information, they on time, they measure, they already know this G, star because when they when this machine they they just run one cycle they know how much of G star and based on this they can know the G prime the star prime so G prime as I said elastic or storage modulus ability to store energy elastically so this is some uh, characteristic of the elastic material like normal material hard material and then as I said before this uh, elastic or storage modulus it's different to the our E value. E value is the stiffness, right? Elastic stiffness. So this is some G uh, single prime is the shear modulus, shear modulus. And then from the shear modulus, it's elastic shear modulus. So when you know the elastic shear modulus, shear is the storage modulus, and then you know the Poisson ratio. What is the meaning of the Poisson ratio? Poisson means show when you change the one material as one direction, the other direction perpendicularly they also deform. So within elastic limit, the deformation ratio is the same. So this is called Poisson ratio. So normally the hydrogen they have Poisson ratio 0.5. Okay. So which means that when you have this G prime value and then one plus 0.5 and then multiply 2 and then we can convert easily to the elastic modulus from the compression mode. So let's say you, hide, you have very small amount of hydrogel, you cannot measure the compression modulus by themselves and then you can use the real logic and calculate this G prime and then G prime multiply 1.5 to and three times. So three times more of the G prime is elastic modulus of the, from the compression mode. Okay, 
So let's say your hydrogel have elastic storage modulus, shear storage modulus like one kilopascal. How much of the elastic modulus? One multiply three, one point five, and then multiply two, three, so three kilopascal. Okay, you should determine like this. If you know really the Poisson ratio of your hydrogen, you can also determine change this Poisson ratio. Okay, how you calculate it? You can refer to other literature. But normally they use 0.5 for hydrogen. But when you have different material like uh, the rubber, rubber material like Germa, that things maybe they have some their own Poisson ratio like 0.3 or 0.4. The why the G double prime? G double prime is viscose or loss modulus. Okay? So ability to dissipate stress. What is the meaning of dissipate? Dissipate is um, go away. They just lose, lose. Okay? That is why we can say loss modulus. So storage modulus, as you say, as you can expect, storage means some really store energy. But this viscosity property this is some related to some loss of the energy, okay? Because the water, the always lose their energy. So G double prime, and then complex modulus. This is our original value. Total modulus can be calculated from maximum stress and maximum strain. And then from this G prime G double prime, you, as you can know, this is some very simple. You know. Triangles, Pythagoras formula, right? G prime square, double prime G double prime square, and root. You can gather this manner. But originally, we calculate G prime G double prime from this G star. Okay. And then loss factor. Loss factor is tangent of this shift. Okay. So you can gather this kind of manner. So loss factor, you can easily know the status of the, your material. So let's say you have ideal viscose water material. This is their value is 100 because G double prime 100 more times than G prime. And then when you have very ideal soft elastic material, this value value is 0 0.01. So, but in realistic, when the tangent uh, theta is over one, this meaning more viscose material. Below one, more elastic material. You can easily assume, okay? And then finally, you can also get viscosity. Actually, viscosity is you cannot easily uh, distinguish viscosity and G prime G double prime. But uh, you can just remember viscosity. The value is pass PAS pass, and then this is stress, and then you have to consider the strain on time. This is called strain rate a little bit different from the strain value. Strain weight is some kind of speed. Okay, so I will show you later. So let's say uh, this is some normal uh, basic concept. Okay, so this is some how you calculate the viscosity. So shear stress, you already get the shear stress, right? But this is not shear strain. This is the strain rate. Okay, so let's see, this is a hydrogen you change, change the height of the unit force, and then you know the area, and you got the shear stress, okay? F divided by area. Well, how about the shear strain? Shear strain, you know this, uh, you already gather this deformate displacement, and then you know this height. So how you calculate? Displacement divided by height. This is called shear strain. But why is the shear strain rate? Shear strain rate, you have considered this velocity. How much they, the displacements occur? So this velocity, they consider the time. So you can say this uh, d divided by h, also divided by time, is shear strain rate. So d, this displacements divided by time is called velocity. This is speed, the speed of the deformation. So a little bit different from the original strain, right? They consider the uh, time term. So, so you can you just understand this one while the different strain rate and, and strain shear strain and shear strain rate. 
And then you can only remember that when this machine, they automatically calculate this viscosity, they consider the time, and then they show like this. And then the value is different from the our G prime, G double prime. They just convert it as a pass, PAS, pass. Okay? So why, why this viscosity is important? Because the G prime, G double prime, other things, the all of the things is for determining this viscosity. Okay? So um, viscosity, so let's say this is a shear stress, this is a shear strain rate. Okay? Shear strain rate, and then uh, when the increase of shear strain rate, some material have uh, when the prepping material, like this is called Newtonian, uh, depend. Oh, maybe, maybe uh, this is something wrong. This is just shear. Sorry, shear strain. Yeah, shear strain. So Newtonian fluid, uh, di they didn't change when the increase of shear strain. They didn't change it. This is Newtonian. But why the shear thickening? Shear thickening. Uh, when you say this, uh, okay, for your better understanding, okay, when you do the shear strain, so shear thickening means that when the increase of a shear strain, the shear thickening is this slope has more slope. This is called shear thickening. The word shear thinning, shear thinning is uh, shear stress increase. The shear the slope it decrease. This is called shear thinning. I'll show you to explain what is the meaning of this one. But anyhow, you should understand that shear thickening means that you have hydrogel, you inject. So when after injection of hydrogel, they start to flow. This is the meaning of shear thinning. Okay. So why is why is another behavior? You have a ketchup. You mix them, and then you know the ketchup is more flow, right? This is the meaning of the shear thinning. You have a paint. When you apply the paint on the wall, they easily they flow, right? This is the meaning of the shear thinning. Shear thinning. But shear thickening is that when you inject the hydrogen after right injection, they didn't flow. They just maintain the morphology. This is the meaning of the shear thickening. So most of the material we met in our normal condition. Most of the material does have shear thinning effect, which means if you increase the shear strain rate, they show more they show more flow, more yeah, fluid property. So this is Newtonian. We never saw it, but shear thickening, shear thinning, we saw sometime. So. You should understand the when you when you measure the shear this real logic, and then let's say you want to add certain material like nanoparticle or semi nanoparticle or silk or other things, and then you observe uh, when you increase the nanoparticle or another hydrogel material when they show G prime up, what's the meaning? You can say that they have more store deformation energy in an elastic manner. So they tend to be more elastic material. More elastic. What does it mean more elastic? Maybe they have more cross-linking. And then they have less swelling. So elastic is some property of the just stone, stone material. Stone material never swell. So less hydrogen ability. But why is it double prime? Uh, dissipate energy, loss of energy will occur in viscous manner. So more viscous. What is the meaning? More flow. And then maybe cross linking, maybe less. Swelling, maybe up. More hydrogen mobility. Okay? So you can imagine this G prime is this kind of networking system, more elastic manner. But G double prime, like this just uh, randomly oriented some silk, you can say like that. Imagine like that. So when you saw some paper G prime, you can think about oh, this is some property of the elastic, property of the hard material. But G double prime, this is a property of the water. 
Okay. And then when you compare G prime to prime, G prime is over G double prime, this show more elastic behavior, which means that they can more store the energy and then they have less chance to deform. Okay? Maintain morphology better. The G double prime is over the G prime, more viscous behavior. And they start the flow. This is the example. So over time, so right after you mixing two mixing the gel, you make the gel. Let's say C collagen gel, you mix it, and then over time they gelate it, right? So you can you can calculate the gelation time like this. Yeah. Maybe last week Ghana presented about the PhD thesis. So some reviewer asked how you determine the gelation time. So normally you can gelate, you can measure gelation time using this real logic. So for example, so let's imagine A B solution. When they mix, they turn to be hydrogen. Okay? So when they mix the, these two solutions, two solutions is have high viscosity, right? More viscous, more water property. So their initial viscous G double prime value is high. And then G single prime value is small. Because this solution has more viscous behavior. But over time, when they start to gelate it, this is changed, okay? So this is, we can call it gelation time. And then they show more elastic manner. So this part, we can say that um, before gelation, this time after gelation. And then you can see the tangent theta, this is almost near, uh, tangent theta near one, maybe a little bit, 1.5. So, like we imagine, this is what, how we call it. This is called, yeah, loss factor, damping factor. So, this tangent theta also, they can be calculated from G prime to theta prime. Ideally, over one, maybe they should be gelated. But in this case, this over one five, they should they are gelated. So, yeah. So using this tangent theta or so portion. When the G prime is over the G prime, you can know the gelation time. Okay. So this is one example how you measure the gelation time using this rheology. And then maybe over time you can know how much of this hydrogel they change. Okay. They tend to be more elastic over time after gelation time. And then to determine this kind of thing, uh, there are many factors you determine. You have to put many factor for checking this loss of this gelation time. You cannot measure this thing at one time point. So that is why we need a lot of sweep. Okay? So you can refer this paper. This is a Professor Body's paper. And maybe I think he tried to publish this paper in Nature Protocol, but somehow they publish in this journal. So you, you have these four different methodology: time sweep, strength sweep, fracking sweep. Uh, cycling strain time sweep. Okay, just you try to remember this this term. What does it mean of time sweep? Time sweep is for determining gelation time. And then when you have inhomogeneous gel, you want to make it homogeneous a little bit, and then you can do time sweep. This kind of preconditioning of hydrogen. And then you can determine three different parameter: heritage, frequency strain, how much you deform for each cycle, and then how you change the time. So time sweep, you fix strain and frequency, only you change the time. So we can call it time sweep. Why the strain sweep? You can imagine, heritage fixed. You can change the strain, like for example, 0.1% to 500%. And then automatically, they over time, they check it, okay? And, the frac and then always the strain sweep should be measured under a last limit. Okay, this you should remember. I show you the meaning of the last limit. And then fracking sweep, you can imagine fracking only changes. Fracking change over time, 0 0.01 and 1 he 10 hertz, and then other strain is fixed. And then while the cyclic strain time sweep, cyclic strain time sweep is measured for shear strain, shear thinning effect. 
So the frequency you can measure shear thinning or shear thickening effect. So depending on what kind of thing you want to measure, you can determine this sweep. Okay? But most of the time, people do all this sweep. At the same time, not at the same time, but on the on one kind of process. So, for example, if we have this hydrogel, you can do this sweep at the same time, or maybe three or four different hydrogel of the same same composition you have to use to measure this uh, different type of sweep. And then, from this different type of sweep, you can determine precisely distillation time. Elastic, elastic limit and other shear thinning or shear thickening effect. So let's imagine you have this kind of 25 mm diameter and 1.5 mm height of gel. And then when you change the strain, how you change it? Compared to height, 0.5. So if you put in 2 mm height, 1 point strain change. So which means this kind of millimeter was changed, rotated using this machine. So you can determine strain, frequency, and time. So, and then when you change this and fix this or change everything, and then you can know the this phase shift. And from this phase shift, you can determine the G prime, G star prime, G star, and loss, loss dangling modulus or viscosity. You can determine. So this is some uh, example of so. So if we want to say that, just show, just see this x-axis. So we can say this is called frequency sweep. This is called strain sweep. Oh, this is called last sweep. This is called called so, uh, we can say shear thinning or shear thickening effect. We can determine. So actually, when you frequency and shear rate, when you at the same time you can convert the frequency to the shear rate. Yeah. In the software, when you measure this thing, after measuring, you just click it and you can change it. Shear rate. Okay. And also, if you click it, this prime, this prime can be changed to viscosity. Okay. So if we want to measure frequency sweep, frequency only should vary, and the other strain should be fixed, and then time they automatically change it. Okay, and then you can see this G prime, G double prime, depending on the percentage of the gel, their shift, right? So we can say this is a crossover point, and then uh, maybe this. So this crossover point, why you have to determine? Because you have to use over the crossover point to determine the hertz frequency for other parameter study. So first, uh, depending uh, according to literature, you determine the strain, point two. Let's say the germa, point two, and then you do the frequency sweep, and then you can know for the frequency sweep. Oh, this gel should be measured over one frequency, one hertz. This gel can be measured like 0.5 frequency. And then you have to measure two gels together. So as a conservative manner, you can measure 10 frequency. We can say that. Below this crossover point, you cannot use that things. And then after determining this frequency, Frequency is you determine, and then now you can change the strain. This strain, how you originally obtained from the literature, this is not perfect. So you can, in, the, in this time, you can change the strain. So this you can do strain sweep, and then from the strain sweep, you can see this kind of go down. G prime, top prime go down. What is the meaning? This is the point. The gel start to break down from the high deformation. So uh, this uh, yeah, orange color should be less than 10 strain percent. This blue color, let's say 100 percent less. And then you have to you have to measure these two things together. So maybe less than 10 percent strain you have to apply, right? 
And then now you determine strain and the heritage. And then you know the strain and heritage. And then now you can start, you can determine the viscosity in precise manner. As I said before, also you click it, you click it, you, in this manner you can determine the same thing. But it's not, it's not very correct. Sometimes. Because if you can determine this strain over this yield point, this is wrong message. Okay? So when you precisely determine this frequency and strain, you can only know this viscosity. In, in this time, you ideally, you choose in the same good strain, but when this strain is over like 100% strain, you origin, originally select from the other literature, but maybe this is something wrong. They, they cannot represent this hydrogel property. So there is a why you have to, originally you come back, but you have to do this strain sweep, a frequency sweep, to determine these two things, and then from this one, you can now check viscosity and shear rate, over shear rate. Also, you click, you change frequency and click, and you change G prime to the prime, you also show like this one. Because this frequency, this viscosity, they consider this G, G prime, G to the prime together. And then, from this shear rate, okay, or you can say that increase of shear rate, viscosity is go down. How can you say that? This is called shear thinning effect. Shear thinning over the increase of shear rate, speed, rotating speed, the viscosity is go down, going down. This is the meaning of the viscosity, shear thinning. And then, this is originally, if you publish in very good journal, they want to show like this. This is normal condition, uh, high uh, normal condition. Let's say this is uh, lower shear rate, 0.1. And when you increase the shear rate 100%, they go down. This is the meaning of the shear thinning effect. But in this manner, they didn't depict as uh, Viscosity, they only show G prime. So in this time, this is called cyclic strain time sweep. So they change from 500% per, high strain in here, and then 0.2% strain here. 0.2% strain, and then when they show 500 strain, yeah, it will less. It will show less G prime. What is the meaning of the less G prime? Less. Elastic. Less elastic means another term, more viscosity. Ideally, but they didn't reveal any G double prime, so we cannot say for 100%. But in here, they want to say that depending on how they deform the hydrogel, they will show different elastic behavior. They want to say like that. So, yeah, just before. According to the shear rate, the stress is uh, proportionally increased. You can say it is Newtonian. Okay? And then this shear rate, when you increase the shear rate, the stress is going up, but the slope is initially highly slope, but they have low slope. So this is the meaning of the shear thinning. And uh, while the shear thickening, over the increase of the shear rate, the stress is also increased, but, and also along with this stress, slope is also increased. So using this shear rate and stress, you can calculate the viscosity, because viscosity is the slope of the, this curve. So viscosity initially up and down, initially low and go up. So, you have to remember this shear thinning, shear thickening, anyhow, over the increase of the shear rate, the stress is go up. But how they go up? Yeah, this is the meaning of the shear thinning or shear thickening. So for example, the silica oil, the shear rate, over the shear rate, the viscosity is the same. Very ideal. 
this is Newtonian material. But ink or paint, increase of shear rate, viscosity is go down. But originally this stress is go up. But the slope is different. And then this cone flower, shear rate increase, viscosity is go up. So, so you can determine this kind of shear rate and stress. So why I want to highlight this shear strain and shear thinning or shear thickening? Because when you want to deliver your stem cell in a certain part, you have to consider this shear thinning or shear thickening. Okay? So both of both, both property is good for stem cell. When they have shear thickening, they have more flow. And then just when after incorporation of stem cell in gel, you can easily deliver the stem cell using very small range of the shearage. Okay? And then when they have shear thickening, after right, right after injection, they can maintain their morphology. They, they cannot never go away. They maintain their stay in the interest of your site. But, so maybe when you have shear thickening, uh, there's the dr drawback is that they have many chance to stop the hydrogel during the injection. Okay? Because more shear strain, shear rate, more viscous, so they have, they stopped in the needle. This is a drawback. The drawback, drawback of a shear thinning. They can very flow well, and then they can uh, prevent the stem cell during the injection, but right after the injection, they can flow. So they can flow on the other side. So this is the one of the drawbacks of shear thinning. So perfect material of hydrogen for stem cell delivery is that during the injection, they have a shear thinning effect. After injection, they have a shear thickening. This is very good. So using the light, light responsive or other pH responsive, you can make this kind of hydrogen. This is very, very good material in terms of stem cell delivery. So this is the protocol how budding do for checking this frequency, this property. So first, they do time sweep. Okay, not in here, up here, but they do time sweep. Two minutes, then this strain and hertz. Note that percent strain determine using the strain sweep to select the strain lower than the yield strain. Okay, strain sweep. And then consistently, non-deforming strain in our system is 1%. From this B graph, they determine 1%. And the similar frequency is determined frequency. And then greater than a crossover frequency. So they determine, this is a crossover point, that they determine, so 10 Hz, like this. And then they do frequency, this one. Yeah. To determine the time sweep, they do this frequency sweep. And then, correction time of 3 seconds, sampling time of 3 seconds, 10 points per decade. Per decade means that when you change 0.01 to 100 Hz, one decade is 0.01 to 0.1. Another decade, 0.1 to 1. 1 to 10. 10 to 100. This is this have four decade, right? So per decade, ten points. So when you determine 0.01 to 100, you can get 40 point. Okay, you can understand. One decade means ten times, ten times. So this question time three, this and then separate time three, they originally do like that. You cannot change it. And then. Strain is the same as for the time sweep. Okay. So do you do the frequency sweep, and then you get the, this result, and then time sweep for recondition the, recondition the gel. Or the reconditioning. Maybe during the frequency sweep, your gel they are deformed. So you just time sweep. Time sweep means just wait. And but wait, but using this strain and hertz. A little bit, uh, this kind of sonication you can imagine, and then you do strain sweep for doing this yeah, big graph, and then you do 
low strain time sweep, high strain time sweep, repetitivity, repeat five times for second strain. Okay, and then also recondition the gel, and then I and J. In here, they didn't reveal here, but another, this is for checking shear sealing effect, okay? They increase the shear rate to 0 to 50, and then it will show certain graph, and then they go down 50 to 0. So when you increase the shear rate, when this have more viscosity, how you can say that? More shear rate, more viscosity, shear thickening. But when you increase the shear rate, 0 to 50, the viscosity is go down. This is the meaning of the shear thinning. Yeah. This is another example to measure the real load of hydrogen. Okay, so in, in here, they determine already the parameter. So using the average collagen fibrin material material, material MC, Temperature, you can change 10, 20, 30. Normally, the room temperature we use it. Gap size, gap size is the height of your hydrogen. And then equivalent time. This is some kind of conditioning. And then you can change frequency strain. So strain sweep, how you do? Frequency fixed, strain change. Frequency sweep, frequent strain fixed, frequency change. Time sweep, two is fixed. And then you just, over time, you measure this time sweep. Okay, the same name, same name. <coughs> so using this parameter that determine all six kind of hydrogen. So maybe if you have this kind of material, collagen-based one, maybe you can start from this point. You can use this strain, so 10 hertz one. And then you can determine your original, your optimal condition using this parameter. So this, from this strain, free, uh, how can you call it? Strain sweep, right? Excess strain, or strain sweep. And then, how you determine the frequency according to the literature? Arbitrary children. We, we can say that this is not per optimal frequency, but from the literature, you just determine first. And then you do this frequency sweep and strain sweep. And then you know yield point. Determine so you cannot over this point to determine the other things. Okay? So you have to select less than 10% approximately for this material. This material less than 5 or 50 or 60%. This material 10%. This material like 20%, 10%. You can know that. This is all. This all is the uh, G prime. In here, G double prime was too small to measure for all hydrogen because they already fully formed. But this is a very old-fashioned machine, so they they, they they didn't determine the G double prime. But nowadays, even they have fully formed hydrogen, we can determine. So maybe you can imagine this is some hydrogen. And then what, how the G double prime should appear? This or this? This is a hydrogen. Hydrogen means uh, they should have more yeah, viscous material compared to the very elastic material. So normally G double prime is lower than G prime. So they show like this. Okay. And then Anyhow, when something is changed, go up and go down, you can see the yield point. Okay? And then next one, what is the next step? Frequency sweep, right? So you already determine the yield point. So you, you did that yield point and then you change, you fix the strain, and you change the frequency. The for the frequency, how as I said before, G double prime always go up like this. And then you can see, you can determine the frequency up to here. Because this is another yield point. 
So the, this, the paper mentioned that the gel region was observed below 20 Hz gel region. This is some, we can say, glass, glassy region. Okay? Future of testing. For material cellulose, the glass transition extends to the approximately 5 to 10 Hz. Metal cellulose, uh, 5 to 10 Hz around here. It will appear the glass transition. So why do we know glass transition? So this is some fracking sweep you do, and then you can observe this kind of G double prime, this gray one. They can cross over the G single prime. This is, and then they start to have very glassy property. Glassy means more. This is a glassy means some kind of very toughened material. Yeah, this is not the original property of hydrogel. Yeah. But some people remember previous things. The previous thing also from the fracking sweep, you did we determine the crossover point. And then determine to over this crossover point we determine frequency, right? So why the difference this and this? So when you imagine this one is from the this point, but this one is from the this point. Always G double prime, G double C single prime, they change initially from the deletion time, they do like this. And then after deletion, always the G prime is go up when they maintain the, maintain the hydrogel. And then G double prime is over the G prime, they turn to be glassy module, glassy transition. So this manner is not anymore the hydrogel property. So we want to measure frequency from this point to this point. Yeah. So how you know when you measure this point, this and this, so from your experience? And then now they do time sweep. Time sweep is for what? For for knowing some kind of gelation time, for example. And then how much you do the time sweep for reconditioning the hydrogen. So let's say this is some uh, time sweep. You fix frequency and strain. But during your hydrogel uh, property measurement, you do some to certain step. In every step, we deform the hydrogel. And then we need reconditioning. So you can imagine, this is the same hydrogen. This is already gelated, right? But after this time, they maintain. This time, they maintain. So, without this time sweep, if you measure the hydrogel, certain property is uh, changed. Not from the hydrogel, from the previous methodology. Right? That is why, from the time sweep, you will be conditioning the hydrogel to the original status. And, and then after 5 seconds later, at least 5 seconds of time sweep, you can do other measurement. At the, at the, using the same specimen. So for that, we need this time sweep. Okay, so plug-in time sweep, we count 10% one time average, and stability at this 1 to 20 pascal at 3 minutes. Ah, this minute. So after 3 minutes, they require, they acquire the stability. And then maybe they will use this time time point for the reconditioning the gel. Okay, this is an after gelation time. Okay, all of these things. And then this is also after gelation time. But if you imagine this is some right after mixing two gel, and then they start to gelate, this is a time point for gelation time. Okay, but here. After gelation, they measure. So we can say this is some uh, stabilizing time for this gel. Uh, so material cellulose continue to increase the G double prime, stabilizing at 25 near 340. So the first, yeah, the first four hydrogel rapidly form and cross over on the object. Too small. So gel ignition kinetic metal solid was slower than the other hydrogel. 
and capture with the material. Transition from a polynomial liquid sample to a polynomial solid gel. So they expect all kind of gel already gelated. Okay, and then they want to measure the stabilizing time. But somehow this metal metacellulose gel they didn't gelate that much. So they they show this transition time point chain and then this time point chain they can be also referred to the generation time of this material. And then yeah at the same manner maybe you have new hydrogel and then the first step is freaking sweep uh, uh, sorry strain sweep okay strain sweep and determine a point frequency sweep determine this point and then you can do time sweep for stabilized gel and then now you are ready for checking shear thinning or shear stress a shear thinning or shear thickening hydrogel yeah you can do this so this is some science translation science translation medicine paper they uh, science advance 2012 so they made their new gel okay now you understand they determine the G prime. Stiff, medium, soft gel. So what is the meaning of the G prime? So G prime, you can convert to the compression modulus, right? This G prime multiply three times. Okay? And then, this is, uh, let's say, uh, one kilopascal. And then this stiff gel has three kilopascal. And then this, uh, like, point one, let's say this is 100, and then maybe 0.3 kilopascal. This is 10, 30, 30, 30, 30 pascal, very low. Soft stiffness. And then G prime means that uh, this is some storage modulus, some the property of the elastic material, right? And then, as I said before, so decrease of G prime means that decrease of cross linking and but which means that more hydrogen property they can swell more tendency okay and then after they sell a soft gel and then they add these three different peptides and how you manner how you know when you add three different peptides little bit change soft so stiffness, shear stress, shear modulus a little bit change, but not that much difference. This very little change. And then they encapsulate uh, this maybe human cell in this hydrogen, and no injection means before injection. And then when they use cell line to deliver the stem to human cell and they inject, 22% are dead because. The cell line cannot prevent the Shiban cell viability physically. But when they use certain gel after incorporating this RGD, you can see most of the gel have less toxicity after injection. So this is some uh, advantage of a shear thinning hydrogen. Okay? Actually, this is not only advantage of shear thinning. This is also advantage of the all hydrogen. All hydrogen they can prevent the force to the cell destroying and inducing toxicity. Okay, this is the uh, advantage of the use of the hydrogen when you inject the stem cell or any kind of gel to the site. Okay. To one point, the so membrane damage cell, low injection, very slow, but after injection using a cell line or RGD for some house, RGD alone, all means that no gel, only RGD. Okay? RGD they incorporate in cell line, and then many cells are dead. But when they use the gel, they are going down. Okay? This toxicity gel, they're going down. But in here, Maybe soft to mid gel is better than this one in terms of how much this gel can make it survive, right? But they want to highlight 
only this gel is better than this other without gel. So I want to highlight that if we want to say something about your paper, and then you can know a lot of statistics you can add, but I highly recommend only appear the one you want to show them, want to say them. Maybe some people just do every every statistic you do like that, but there is if that one is not your highlight point, you did you do not reveal that. Okay, just only show the statistic. What when you want to say? That's more obvious and that's better. And then they check the good advantage of hydrogel, and then they want to say, uh, this one, shear thinning effect. How they change from C shear thinning and self healing behavior of soft gel. Okay, after adding RG RGG shield, and then they change 0.1 and 10 hertz. Heritage gray. Heritage means more sure strain. Okay, more uh, more strain rate. Sorry, more strain rate. Frequency can be converted to strain rate, which means more speed. More speed, viscosity go down. Less speed, viscosity go up. This is the meaning of the shear thinning effect. So when you convert it, this is some um, low speed, high speed, and then this is some shear thickening effect. Okay? And then viscosity, RGD, RDG, same manner, because even uh, any kind of you, you add peptide, maybe there's not much of difference affecting to the shear thickening effect. Okay? So once you want to deliver your stem cell using hydrogel, this is an end point. So for this checking this viscosity and shear thinning effect or shear thickening effect, you should determine frequency, right frequency, right time step, right strain, and then you can determine this one. So for that, you we have this DHR one machine in our dental uh, biomaterial lab. So we already make some kind of protocol, how to turn and on, turn on and off this machine how geometry and calibration, sample loading, experimental. We already saved time, strain, frequency, tessellation, creep, shear thinning. You just use. That's all. We already set up. You can use a little bit change it. And when you enter this 516 loop in dental building, this is the machine. And then uh, we already, like a comfort car machine, there is some order how to turn on the machine. Okay, so we have air filter, water and water circulator to maintain the temperature, and compressor like this. And then number one, turn on compressor. Two, water circulation. Three, air filter. Shift. This machine, turn on. Computer, turn on. And then this is geometry. Cover. You you remove it. And then upper side also, they are rotate always. So you should, you grip this one, and then you open it. So you want to remove this cap, so you grip this upper part, because this is linked to the this part, and then you remove this black cap gently. But don't try to induce a lot, of, a lot of force. Just gently, you remove this one. And then this after removing geometry, and you can see this kind of thing. And then now it's time to turn on this program, Trios. Connect. Connect means connect to the machine. You can see this kind of pages. And then first thing is, uh, without this geometry inst inst installed, this geometry can be connected to here. Before that, you do calibration. Click calibration, and then instrument. They open the instrument. Then every time you turn on this machine, you have to do calibration. And then calibration here, calibrate. Okay, this one, calibrate. 
and then they automatically calibrate. Okay. And then their value is yeah, within certain range. And then we have many geometry, 25, 40, 60 mm diameter. So this is for soft hydrogel 25, hard hydrogel A, honey 40, water 60. So depending on your sample type, you can change this geometry. Okay? So normally I recommend 25 mm soft hydrogel. And then now after calibration thing, you have to do geometry. So after install your geometry, click here, double click. And then uh, this is some original condition. So you just sweep this one. Just so you calibration, calibration, sweep, calibration. Okay. This is for checking temperature, but normally we are doing the room temperature condition. If we want to do 37 degree, you can do like that, 37, and then it will take some time. Okay. So geometric calibration, rotation, mapping should be done for three times. So we already set up, so you just follow this protocol. Calibrate. And then, this is the last of the calibrate. After install this geometry and bottom side, and then this is the machine. Go up, go down, and go to the original position. And then, uh, in the software, you can make this machine go down, but it's very slow. So you manually, a little bit go down this machine to up, almost approach here, and then you click this zero, and then they automatically approach here to determine how much of gap or space they they are. And then you, this is the after zero gap. Zero gap means this machine can know zero thickness. And then now you have to load your gel. So for loading the gel, you should click this one and go up, and then or you can determine the height using the software. 10 millimeter. So enough software you set, and then you apply this gel. Okay, sample loading. Now let's say your gel has approximately two millimeter. In here also you add two millimeter, and then the this is go down to approach this gel. And then they show some extra force after approaching the hydrogel and then you have to determine how much of force was applied during the measurement because this machine should grip the gel to sweep it rotate it so they should be anyhow a touch hydrogel and then rotate it so we have to determine how much of newton force was applied this is called extra force normally 0.3 newton or 1 newton it's up to you so after extra force, we determine 0.3 Newton, and then this is some they automatically adjust to the extra force within this range. One millimeter go up, 0.5 millimeter go down. So even though you have, you have two millimeter, maybe this machine automatically go go up and down, and then they when they apply the extra force around here, and then they show the ready sound, ready sign, and then we can start this machine. And then, now experiment. So you save the test in D drive. Okay, we all of all of the result in C drive we we delete it. D drive is only for memorizing it. And then no need to geometry tab setup. So sample test you file determine five paths in D drive and then you make your own folder. Geometry pass, and then right you go to this thing, third, third point. This is um, experiment interface, and then you click this one, open percent file. We already have this creep, freaking sweep, more time sweep, other things we have it. 
So you open it, and then you just change the strain and the frequency. So let's see this is when you change this frequency 0 0.1 to 100, what we call it? Frequency. Okay? We fix strain. We change frequency. Point per decade, 10 time range, how you much point you, you are want to measure. Okay? And then wave or temperature, normally we do the room temperature with the unclick it. In here is set point, just click it. And then this is the frequency sweep. And then you run the machine. You can do like this. Stress, modulus, G prime, and then set, set of time. And then when you click it, and when you change this uh, frequency, you can also change it. Because during the frequency sweep, anyhow, time goes on. So you can change excesses from the frequency and time or other other things. So just double click it and you can see many parameters you want you can achieve at the same time. And so this green is strain as a percentage, blue <coughs> is a modulus and shear stress is also you obtain like this. Okay? In, and then when you gather the data file Plain data and export to txt file. And then after, when you want to remove, in, uh, turn off this machine, geometry remove, cover, program off, computer off, instrument, adversary you can do. And please don't forget to make logbook. Okay? And then you can freely download the Trios program so you can gather. So low file of trios, and then you can install this program, and then you can low file. You can modify your parameter using this program in your computer, and then they can give us this uh, manual file. So you want to do it? You can try to study this one. They determine this sweep other kind of methodology altogether. So, uh, from the last three weeks, including this week, we study about the strain stress curve using normal condition, compression, or shear, or tensile mode, right? And then, now you know the hydrogen measurement, stiffness and stress relaxation using compression mode. You already, already know. And then, membrane, also, stiffness, stress, you can determine. Scaffold, also you can know how to measure. And then, this is all kind of this uh, bulk property of the material. What is the surface property, mechanical property, you can measure by hardness. So, you can use because and loop hardness machine. Only we can use because in our, our item. Because. And then, you have the rheology. You have hydrogel, you can determine G prime, the prime, and you can do a lot of sweep to determine shear thinning or shear thickening effect. And then there is another thing to determine this kind of mechanical property. We can call it nano inductor. Nano inductor, uh, as a one nano inductor, you can determine the surface stiffness, surface hardness, surface roughness. These three things you can obtain all together. You can go to the center and book it. And then they will show you the result. Okay. Okay, this is the end of this lecture. So if